back to another episode of Project Accounting. So our topic for today is all about journalizing business transactions. So for this episode, you will be able to describe how accounts, debits, and credits are used to record business transactions, apply the results of debit and credit in recording business transactions, and record business transactions under the double entry system in the journal. So yung system of collecting and processing transaction data tapos yung pag-communicate ng financial information to decision makers is known as the accounting information system. Mostly, yung mga businesses ngayon use computerized accounting systems, sometimes referred to as electronic data processing systems. Itong mga systems na to, they handle all the steps involved in the recording process from initial data entry hanggang sa preparation of the financial statements. These accounting information systems rely on a process referred to as the accounting cycle. So as you can see, the accounting cycle begins with the analysis of the business transactions and ends with the preparation of the reversing entries. So na-discuss na natin yung first step last time sa analyzing business transactions. So ngayon, ang i-discuss natin is about journalizing these business transactions. So, bago tayo mag-start mag-journalize ng mga business transactions, i-define muna natin ano ang ibig sabihin ng account. Account is an individual accounting record of each asset, liability, owner's equity, revenue, and expenses items in which the effects of business transactions are recorded. So, in its simplest form, an account consists of three parts. The title of the account, a left side for the debit, and the right side for the credit side. So because the format of the account resembles the letter T, we refer to it as a T account. T account is very useful tool na ginagamit for illustration, analyzing transaction, and problem solving. So ano ba ibig sabihin nitong debit and credit? So the words debit and credit came from the Latin words deber, meaning to owe, and creder, meaning to trust or believe. So, ina-abbreviate yung debit as DR and credit as CR. So, in accounting, yung increase or decrease sa account is being made by means of debit and credit. So, when an account is debited, di ibig sabihin nun na yung account will increase kasi pwede na yung debit is increased or decreased in balance of the account. Credit din does not mean na yung account is decreased kasi credit may also increase or decrease yung account balance. So, as discussed last time, each transaction must affect two or more accounts para maging balance yung accounting equation. So, in other words, for each transaction, debits must equal to credits. So, the equality of debits and credits provides the basis for the double entry system of recording transactions. So, double entry bookkeeping is a method of recording business transactions which recognizes the dual effect of a transaction. Ibig sabihin na for every value received, there is a corresponding value given up. Since debit does not necessarily mean increase and credit does not necessarily mean decrease, dapat alam natin yung rules of debit and credit sa bawat account. So to illustrate yung application ng debit and credit, magbigay tayo ng ilang accounts. So for example, yung cash. Cash is an asset. So, pag may increase sa asset, doon natin ilalagay sa left side. Then, kapag may decrease naman, ilalagay natin sa right side. Then, since alam natin na asset is equal to liabilities and equity, and dapat equal yung accounting equation, so it follows na opposite yung magiging effect niya sa liabilities and equity. So, sa liabilities, kapag nag-decrease siya, doon siya sa left side. Then, kapag nag-increase naman yung liabilities, doon siya sa right side. Ganun din sa owner's capital, wherein kapag nag-decrease siya, doon siya sa left side. Then, kapag nag-increase siya, doon siya sa right side. Then, sa capital, since alam natin na capital is affected by the investment, drawings, revenue, and expenses, so para ma-illustrate natin, ilagay natin sa T-account ng owner's capital yung mga to. So, kapag investment, it will increase the capital, so sa right side siya. Then, pag drawing naman, sa left side kasi mababawasan yung owner's capital. Kapag revenue naman, doon din siya sa right side kasi mag-increase yung owner's capital. And kapag expenses naman, doon siya sa left side kasi mag decrease yung owner's capital. So from there, madederive natin yung T-account ng drawings, revenue, and expenses account. So sa owner's drawings, since yung drawings is nasa left side ng owner's capital, 
So, para mag-increase yung owner's drawing, nandun din siya sa left side. And kapag nag-decrease yung owner's drawing, dun siya sa right side. So, sa revenue naman, since yung revenue is nasa right side ng owner's capital, para mag-increase yung revenue account, dun siya sa right side. Then, pag nag-decrease naman yung revenue, dun siya sa left side. Lastly, yung expense account, since yung expenses is nasa left side ng owner's capital, para mag-increase siya sa expense account, dun siya sa left side. Then, kapag nag-decrease naman yung expense account, then dun siya sa right side. So, to illustrate your rules of debit and credit, magbigay tayo ng example. So, attorney H. Mendoza decided to start her practice of law by establishing own law office. So, following are the transactions of the law firm during January, its first month of operations. So, on January 1, cash of 200000 was received from attorney Mendoza, the owner, as her initial investment. Then, on January 10, purchased the office equipment worth 50000 then it is paid 10,000 cash as down payment and signed as promissory note for the balance. Then on January 15, issued check in payment for promissory note issued amounting to 40,000. Then on January 20, billed client for the services rendered on account amounting to 30,000. Then on January 25, received payment from client to whom services were previously rendered on account. Then on January 27, the owner withdrew 10,000 cash from the business for personal use. Then on January 30, paid office rent for the month amounting to 5,000. So, pumunta tayo sa ating first transaction. So, on January 1, cash of 200,000 was received from attorney Mendoza, the owner, as her initial investment. So, alamin natin kung ano yung accounts affected. So, yung accounts affected dito ay cash at H. Mendoza Capital since nag-invest si attorney Mendoza ng cash amounting to 200,000. So, next naman is your effects ng transaction na to sa mga accounts affected. So, cash and capital will increase kasi nga nakareceive si business ng cash from attorney Mendoza as investment. So, as you can see sa T-account natin, since cash is an asset and also it increase, so dun siya sa debit side kasi nga nag-increase cash. Then, sa capital naman, since nag-increase din si capital, so dun siya sa credit side. So, yung debit and credit sa transaction na to ay debit cash amounting to 200,000 and credit H. Mendoza Capital amounting to 200,000. So, next transaction naman is on January 10, purchase office equipment worth 50,000, paid 10,000 cash as down payment and signed a promissory note for the balance. So, yung accounts affected sa transaction na ito ay office equipment kasi bumili na ng office equipment, cash kasi nagbayad as down payment, and notes payable kasi yung balance, eh, nag-sign daw siya ng promissory note. Then ano naman ang effect ng transaction na to sa mga accounts affected? So sa office equipment, it will increase kasi bumili daw ng office equipment. Cash will decrease kasi nga nagbayad as down payment. And notes payable will increase kasi dun sa balance, eh, nagkaroon ng utang si business. So as you can see sa T-account ng office equipment, since office equipment is an asset and nag-increase yung office equipment, dun siya sa debit side. While yung cash naman nag-decrease, so dun siya sa credit side. Sa notes payable naman, since it is liabilities, baliktad naman yung effect niya sa asset. So since nag-increase yung notes payable, dun siya sa credit side. So yung debit and credit sa transaction na ito ay debit, office equipment, amounting to 50,000, credit cash, amounting to 10,000, and credit notes payable, amounting to 40,000. So, next transaction naman, on January 15, issued check in payment for promissory note issued amounting to 40,000. So, yung accounts affected dito is yung notes payable kaninang January 10 and also cash kasi nag-issue daw ng check para mabayaran yung promissory note. So, yung effect ng transaction na ito sa mga accounts affected, so binayaran yung notes payable. So, notes payable will decrease, yung cash then will decrease kasi nagbayad. Since cash is decreased, dun siya sa credit side. Well, yung notes payable naman, since nag-decrease din si notes payable, dun siya sa debit side. So, yung debit and credit sa transaction na ito is debit notes payable amounting to 40,000 and credit cash amounting to 40,000. So, next transaction naman is on January 20, billed client for services rendered on account amounting to 30,000. So, yung accounts affected dito ay accounts receivable at service revenue. Since, sinisingil na natin si client para dun sa nirender nating services, pero hindi pa necessarily na nakokolekta. 
So yung effect ng transaction na ito sa ating accounts affected ay it will both increase yung accounts receivable at service revenue natin. So as you can see sa T-account, since accounts receivable is an asset, then nag-increase siya sa transaction na ito, then dun siya sa debit side. Then yung service revenue naman, since nag-increase din si service revenue, then dun siya sa credit side. So yung debit and credit sa transaction na ito ay debit accounts receivable amounting to 30,000 and credit service revenue amounting to 30,000. So next transaction naman is on January 25. Receive payment from client to whom services were previously rendered on account. So yung accounts affected dito ay cash at accounts receivable since nakakolekta na daw tayo ng cash from the receivable natin kanina January 20. So yung effect ng transaction na ito sa ating accounts affected ay it will increase cash kasi nga nakareceive tayo ng cash. Then accounts receivable will decrease kasi nabawasan na yung accounts receivable natin since nabayaran na ni client. So as you can see sa T-account since nag-increase si asset, dun siya sa debit side. Then yung accounts receivable nag-decrease so dun siya sa credit side. So yung debits and credits sa transaction na ito ay debit cash amounting to 30,000 and credit accounts receivable amounting to 30,000. So next transaction naman is on January 27, the owner withdrew 10,000 cash from the business for personal use. So yung accounts affected dito ay H. Mendoza drawing and cash kasi nag-withdraw daw si H. Mendoza. Then yung effect ng transaction na ito sa mga accounts affected ay it will increase drawings kasi nga nag-withdraw si H. Mendoza. Then it will decrease cash kasi kumuha siya ng cash sa kanyang business. So as you can see sa T-account, since nag-decrease si cash, so dun siya sa credit side. Then dun sa H. Mendoza drawing naman, since nag-increase si H. Mendoza drawing, so dun siya sa debit side. So yung debit and credit sa transaction na ito ay debit H. Mendoza drawing amounting to 10,000 and credit cash amounting to 10,000. So yung last transaction naman is on January 30. Paid office rent for the month amounting to 5,000. So yung accounts affected dito ay rental expense and cash kasi nagbayad ka daw ng office rental for the month. So yung effect ng transaction na ito sa ating mga accounts affected, so rental expense will increase kasi nag-incur ka ng expense for the rent. Then cash will decrease kasi nga nagbayad ka for the office rent. So as you can see sa T-account, since cash decrease, so dun siya sa credit side. While yung rental expense naman, since nag-increase siya, so dun siya sa debit side. So yung debits and credits sa transaction na ito ay debit rental expense amounting to 5,000 and credit cash amounting to 5,000. So after nating malaman yung rules of debit and credit, ready na tayo for journalizing entries. So yung mga business, initially, nire-record nila sa journal yung mga transaction in chronological order. The order in which they occur. Kaya yung journal, tinatawag din as book of original entry. So for each transaction, the journal shows the debit and credit effects on specific accounts. So may iba't ibang kinds na journals, pero ang pinaka-basic form ng journal is a general journal. Typically, yung general journal, meron spaces for dates, accounts titles and explanations, references, and two amount columns for debit and credit. So yung process ng entering ng transaction sa journal is called journalizing. So, dapat i-journalize natin yung mga transaction isa-isa. So, a complete journal entry consists of the date of the transaction, the accounts and amounts to be debited and credited, and a brief explanation of the transaction. So, para ma-illustrate natin kung paano mag-journalize ng transaction, i-example natin yung problem natin kanina. So, sa date column, ilalagay muna natin yung year and small figures on top of the first line, tapos yung month naman yung below the year. Tapos, yung day naman yung nasa second column. Then, yung year and month, hindi na isusulat ulit sa same page unless nagbago yung month. Tapos, yung day, laging isusulat regardless of number of transactions occurred on the same date. Tapos, sa particulars column naman, yung title ng account na tinemit yung ilalagay muna. Tapos, yung account na kinredit naman. Nakaindent dapat yung credit. Tapos, maglalagay din tayo ng brief description ng transaction. So, noong January 1, yung transaction na ide-debit is cash at ikakredit naman is H. Mendoza Capital. Then, yung brief description is cash investment by the owner. Sa PR column naman or posting reference column, ilalagay lang kapag nasa posting stage na. Yung account number ng account, 
na dinebit at kinredit ang ilalagay sa posting reference na to after ma-post sa ledger. Then, sa debit naman, yung amount na dinebit, which is 200,000, then yung kinredit na amount sa credit column. Sa two-column journal, huwag maglalagay ng peso sign, comma, at decimal point. Kapag wala namang sentabo, dash na lang ang ilalagay. Tapos, maglilip ng one space after each journal entry. And then, ilalagay natin sa taas ng book yung general journal at page number sa each sheet ng journal. Tapos, some entries involve only two accounts, one debit and one credit, gaya nung sa January 1. This is called simple entry. Pero may mga transactions na nagre-require ng more than two accounts in journalizing. So, yung mga entry na requires three or more accounts is called compound entry. And this compound entry, the standard format requires that all debits be listed first before the credit, so gaya nung January 10. To summarize what we have learned today, Accounting information system is the system of collecting and processing transaction data and communicating financial information to decision makers. The accounting cycle begins with the analysis of the business transactions and ends with the preparation of the reversing entries. Account is an individual accounting record of each asset, liability, owner's equity, revenue, and expenses items in which the effects of business transactions are recorded. Double entry bookkeeping is a method of recording business transactions which recognizes the dual effect of a transaction. Assets, drawings, and expenses are increased by debits and decreased by credits, while liabilities, owner's capital, and revenues are increased by credits and decreased by debits. Journalizing is the process of recording business transactions in the book of original entry called the journal. And a journal discloses in one place the complete effects of a transaction, provides a chronological record of transactions, and prevents or locates errors because the debit and credit amounts for each entry can be easily compared. So if you like this video or if this video helped you, please give a thumbs up and subscribe for more episodes. Thank you!